Digital Team Leading the Desktop Ecosystem. Thank you for attending the webinar today and I would like to welcome you all to the Citrix Ready Technical Webinar Series where we showcase how Citrix and our partners have integrated to deliver valuable products and solutions to common pro problems faced by our customers today. Citrix Ready is an end-to-end -end technology partner program that showcases and recommends third-party products, solutions and services that demonstrate compatibility with Citrix products. Customers can quickly and easily find solutions recommended by Citrix in the Citrix Ready Exchange Marketplace by navigating to citrixready.com. For more information on the Citrix Ready program, you can navigate to citrix.com slash partner programs slash citrix ready. Today, we will hear a brief introduction about Comtrade, listen to a presentation detailing their solution and watch some amazing demos. A brief introduction about Comtrade. Comtrade was established in the year 1990, has 1,500 total employees and has been a Citrix partner since 2002. With a proven track record of delivering industry-leading IT solutions and software engineering services, Comtrade is a trusted developer of end-to-end -end technology products and solutions in various industries. Comtrade's customers include some of the world's most renowned businesses spanning a number of industries, including government, financial institutions, healthcare, telecommunication providers, high-tech vendors, SMBs, and enterprises. Comtech management products is recognized as an enterprise application and infrastructure management for bringing native integration to Microsoft's Core and HP Ops Manager. Before we start the presentation, if you have any questions during the webinar, please use the question panel on the right side and we take your questions in the question and answer session. Without any further delay, please welcome Bogdan Vihar, the Senior Product Manager from Comtrade to begin today's presentation. Hi Bogdan. Over to you. Thank you, Manju. So um, today, after a short introduction, the, the agenda is to uh, focus on Citrix and Microsoft System Center Operations Manager, or uh, SCOM in short. In uh, particular, we are going to talk about how you can use SCOM to deliver full end-to-end -end monitoring across Citrix infrastructure and uh, end users. A large part of this presentation is going to be about Zen Desktop and Zen App version 7, including the storefront component, uh, with lots of demos, of course. As Zen Desktop and Zen App version 7.6 has just been released, uh, let me tell you right away that we will definitely support that version too. So you have already heard about who we are from Manju. Um, Comtrade has also been a long-time partner of both Microsoft and Citrix, uh, achieving significant partnership levels uh, with both companies, and you can regularly see us at their conference events as exhibitors. Uh, last ye a few years, our solution have also been selected finalists for the Best of Synergy and Best of Tech and Awards, uh, giving our solution additional credibility from independent industry reviewers. So why should monitoring using System Center be on the top of your list to consider, especially if you run business-critical Citrix environment? Well, to begin with, uh, analysts tell us that Microsoft, with their System Center product family, is the only vendor out of the big five demonstrating notable market share growth in the era of IT operations management. It is a comprehensive platform that uh, delivers robustness, scalability, and overall manageability balanced with attractive TCO and time to value. At the same time, we find that uh, there is a large percentage of Citrix customers that are entitled to use System Center and really all it takes for them is to deploy and get trained to it, on it to, to start using it. Uh, to make this decision even simpler, uh, Comtrade is for more than six years now delivering a native System Center plugin that extends its monitoring capabilities to the Citrix platform, so enabling faster diagnosis and resolution of Citrix issues, increased uh, IT operations productivity, 
ability to leverage investment into the system center platform and eliminate that Citrix lightning rod. Now let's see why Citrix and SCOM are such a good combination. Now before we begin, I am aware that not many attendees today are probably experts in both areas, Citrix and SCOM. Therefore, I will really give you a quick intro to both solutions. First, Citrix. Citrix Zen Desktop delivers Windows applications and desktops as secure mobile services. End users access apps and desktops remotely from their endpoint devices and their requests are handled by elaborate interactions between Citrix infrastructure components in the data center, as shown on the right-hand side. Those including uh, include networking components such as Netscalers, then you've got web front end in form of storefront or the old web interface, and desktop delivery controllers uh, with desktop and application hosting servers. Then you've got provisioning servers that deliver boot OS images, and there's of course the license server as well as some database servers. End user interaction with Citrix is very straightforward actually. So the way they access Citrix is first they would launch a web browser or a Citrix receiver application. Then they would log in to the web front end. Uh, the next step, they would see a list of available applications and desktops. Then, of course, they would choose which one they want to use, launch it, and use it to do their work. At the end, of course, they would close it and uh, that kind of concludes the end user experience, which, which you can see is really simple and streamlined, which is really a great thing about Citrix. But while simple from the end user's perspective, there are a number of moving parts and interactions between various Citrix components on the back end where to start looking if users complain about performance or how do you proactively detect issues in the Citrix infrastructure. Well, luckily, there is a solution to that. Now enter the Ops Manager, the other side of the story today. Operations Manager is a flexible monitoring platform that helps ensure predictable performance and availability of your physical, virtual or cloud IT infrastructure. SCOM management servers orchestrate and delegate monitoring activity to agents that run on servers that you monitor, then store all collected monitoring information in the database and interact with Ops Manager admins using the Windows or Web native console. Some of the key concepts Ops Manager users are, first we've got topology views. Those help you really visualize components, their dependencies and health of your target monitored environment. In this case, and the snapshot here, a Zen desktop site deployment. Then you've got the Health Explorer view that allows you to drill down to health of individual a component, for example, in this snapshot we see health of individuals and desktop controller broker service in particular. Then we've got alert views that summarize current and past uh, issues in parts of your environment such as storefront sites in this case. Then you've got event views. Event views enable you to present in one view all important Windows event log entries across your complete target environment, such as in this case showing Zen app related alerts. Then you've got dashboard views uh, that focus on showing health of different parts of your environment in one single view, such as different layers of your provisioning services deployment, like in this case. Then you've got performance views. Performance views allow you to view new real-time uh, performance information, for example, cumulative CPU utilization of your Zen server pools. Then you've got reporting capabilities, the reports that enable you to summarize and view any relevant management information over longer periods of time, such as, in this case, VDI performance of a particular user. And the last one is tasks, uh, tasks that allow administrators to interact or execute scripts, if you like, on target managed systems. Like in this case, we see response times of a synthetic probe execution.
But how do you connect Citrix and SCOM together? Right? So Ops Manager uh, enables extending its capabilities using the so-called management pack modules. At Comtrade, we have over the past six years developed a suite of native operations manager management packs for Citrix so that you can uh, so that uh, operations manager admins and Citrix admins can work together and leverage operations manager platform to deliver a complete end-to-end -end Citrix monitoring from the infrastructure and end users perspective. Now let's take a quick glance at the Citrix management pack uh, suite structure. This diagram depicts the Citrix management pack suite modules in a kind of a cloud-wise uh, breakdown. At the lowest networking level, we see Netscale and CloudBridge management packs that we deliver. Those really deal with the networking uh, components. Then followed by the Zen server management pack that obviously works at the hypervisor or virtualization level. Then on the application level, you will find majority of our management packs, such as the one for Zen Desktop, Zen App, Storefront, provisioning services, and so on. Now today, for the rest of the presentation, we are going to focus and dig much deeper into the Zen Desktop, Zen App, as well as the storefront management packs. So, we will begin first with the storefront. Now, uh, let me begin with a short intro into how storefront actually works, of course, on a very high level. Now, Storefront, as we've seen, is the web front end that enables end users to connect to their resources. And as such, um, to facilitate that connection, it first presents logon web page to the end user, if, of course, the user is connected by web browser. Then, as a next step, it would authenticate the end user. After a successful authentication, it requests enumeration of resources that are available to the end user. These can be hosted applications or desktops. And finally, when user selects an application or desktop uh, she wants to access, Storefront will process that launch request and pass it to the Citrix receiver to connect to. So to perform all these fun functions, Storefront, uh, of course, heavily depends on the back-end XML broker service. Uh, this service is typically run on a desktop uh, on delivery controller servers. Now, as a result, some of key questions related to Storefront, of course, from the aspect of monitoring, are typically, can end users access and log in to the login page? or uh, how long does it take to log in actually to the storefront for the end user? And after the login, are users able to see all their published resources? Or, so we are hearing customers asking a lot about this and to address these uh, questions, we have implemented storefront monitoring in a very specific way. Now, uh, to effectively address these challenges, we have decided to implement the monitoring of the storefront as a synthetic. So for probe to be able to carry out probing, uh, you need to configure first a probing account. This account has only one requirement really, it uh, needs to have resources available in each site that it will be probing against. So once the probe is configured and running, it will emulate end user loading the logon page, then it will log in and enumerate all the resources. But there is, of course, one detail worth mentioning here. When real end users log into the storefront, they are handled by a single XML broker uh, service due to the load balancing nature of the storefront. But for monitoring, this is not really good enough. Um, as you may miss the other XML broker, right, that uh, might be serving the same site, but is not operational. So the storefront probe is implemented in such a way that it makes sure it explicitly asks each XML broker to respond, therefore making sure the complete uh, configuration is verified each time. Now it's time for our first demo.
Now we will begin with the topology view, right? We've seen that topology views are designed to show you the structure of your environment, in this case a storefront. And by the way, this is all automatically uh, discovered. So we've got one storefront server with a number of services on it and a single store that is exposed and that end users will access. As you can see of the, from the bottom part of the topology, there are actually a couple of sites, uh, Berlin and Boston in this case, that are delivered uh, through this store. And then on the right hand side we have a receiver for web, which is actually the component that enables uh, end users to use the browser to connect. We can actually launch and connect to it, do if you like a manual check and see whether the receiver, uh, this web front end, is actually working. Now uh, we've got, of course, uh, two sites we've seen and each side is delivered by a single uh, controller. Uh, and now we are going to kind of stop one of the broker services in order to see how the uh, storefront management pack is going to detect it. Now for the time being everything is still healthy but the management pack will quickly detect there's an issue with the controller and mark this controller as unhealthy. And of course because of that also propagate this health information up to the site level. This health change also triggers an alert and these alerts are shown in the alerts view which is another component of SCOM. And there are some details attached to this alert view, for example the reason of the alert and other parameters. Now Storefront Management Pack also delivers a number of views like this performance view that shows you response time of broker brokers. You see the yellow broker is kind of slow responding. Then we have a performance view that shows web receiver performance. In this case web receiver is pretty well performing. And the last one is showing the store performance which also occasionally is crippled uh, no doubt by this other controller that was slowly responding. Now let us fix the problem, right? So we were notified as an operator that something is wrong. Uh, we went to the server, restarted or stopped, started the broker service again. And then if you go back to the topology, the management pack will detect that this problem has actually been resolved and change the health state automatically of the topology. And uh, as a result, of course, you see that everything is back to normal again and healthy and also the alert uh, is going to be cleared automatically. So this is a short storefront demo that kind of shows how the synthetic probe operates, right? It synthetically checks every couple of minutes all the brokers and make sure they're operational. If they are not, you will immediately get alerted. So the key point here I would say is that uh, in order to get really the proper storefront monitoring and what is the, really the benefit of this synthetic probe approach is that you can monitor your storefront deployment proactively. Right? So this means that using this active synthetic probe you are actually able to detect storefront issues before end users will notice you can fix them and restore full capacity and of course most importantly by doing that you will be keeping your service levels high. Okay, so that was storefront and now let's move to the second part which is the biggest part of today's presentation. It is about really Zen Desktop and Zen App Monitoring. Let's begin uh, again with a very high level overview of the Zen Desktop and Zen App architecture which is depicted on this slide. As you may be aware, uh, with version 7 of the Zen Desktop and Zen App, uh, the architecture, the underlying architecture is shared, right? It is the so-called FlexCast Management Architecture or FMA. It is a very resilient design and maintains complete site state in the database. Now each site that you set up is managed by servers called delivery controllers that orchestrate complete delivery process. They would interact with storefront as we have seen, just seen in the demo. Then they manage virtual machine lifecycle as well as the end users connections that they connect to virtual machines. So there is another concept of then delivery groups that effectively specify uh, which desktop operates OS machines will deliver desktop OS to the end users and which server OS machines on the other side 
uh, will deliver server desktops or hosted applications to the end users. So that's the concept of delivery groups. And now at the end, of course, there also needs to be some hosting infrastructure that will actually execute all that work. And this hosting can be actually on-premise or in the cloud, uh, which supplies them capacity to run all the virtual machines that the environment will need. That is uh, kind of the uh, architecture of ZenApp and Zen Desktop version 7 in, in a nutshell. Now, a key challenges when it comes to Zen Desktop and Zen App version 7 can be split in two groups. First, the infrastructure related challenges and then secondly, end user related challenges. Infrastructure related challenges are mostly around desktop controller health, availability of the database and hosting infrastructure, delivery group health and of course sustained infrastructure performance. The end user challenges are then mostly related to uh, availability, right? Availability of apps, availability of desktops, user experience, such as quick launch time, responsiveness, and really the overall performance, as well as the ability to troubleshoot when needed. Now, let's again switch to a demo, our first Zen Desktop Zen App demo that is going to be around infrastructure monitoring. Again, we are going to begin with the topology view. Here, of course, focusing on the our Zen desktop sites. In this case, what we have is really two sites, Berlin and Boston. And actually, each site uh, has some uh, elements underneath it. Most importantly, of course, the delivery controllers. In my case, I have a single delivery controller that is supporting this Berlin site. And underneath it, you can see a number of services that enable this control to actually do its work. And each controller has a health indicator assigned. Now, they are all green, but what does this mean, right? If you want to know, you need to drill down into the so-called Health Explorer view to see all the checks that are being performed on each of the services. And these are really extensive from whether the database is available, if service in health is dating, is configuration okay, and performance is it there. So really a lot, a lot of checks actually make sure that the service is healthy and that it carries this green check mark uh, on it. Then we have, of course, the site-wide information in the topology. So things like uh, that are important from infrastructure perspective are delivery groups. Uh, we have a number of delivery groups here, and they are in on top level kind of, of two types, right? Server OS delivery groups, like in this case. And this one is slightly different, is this desktop OS delivery group. So you can actually expand further these server OS delivery groups to actually see which server OS machines are delivering or are part of this group. And if you drill down into the Health Explorer again to see you know, what are the checks that are being done there, you can see that there's uh, things like failed registrations, number of available machines, uh, aggregate load of the servers, and things like that. So really making sure that the delivery group is healthy. If it's not, you will be alerted on that. What about the desktop OS checks? So there are also a number of checks available there, uh, very similar but slightly different occasionally, like number of ready desktops. That's a very important parameter of a desktop group is being monitored here, and some other like failed registrations. So these are the checks done on the delivery group level. Now, what about the other side, the hypervisor, the hosting infrastructure, right? So we also discover those, put them into the topology, and periodically check, well, does the site have really the accessibility uh, of the hosting infrastructure that is configured to be used with it? And then the last one, it's kind of what comes from the ZenApp side of the product uh, in version 6 is the uh, published applications, right, that you can also make available to your end users. And each published application, if you kind of uh, expand it, will show uh, which delivery group is delivering it. And uh, you can go even further and see exactly which service actually, servers are part of that delivery group. And this hierarchy really helps you understand if there's a problem on server or delivery group level, which application is impacted because of that. And this is uh, really the beauty of this topology view, enabling you to see these dependencies and how issues on server level impact 
the applications. So this, uh, in short, is a, a walkthrough through the infrastructure monitoring components. We've seen things like on site level, on controller level, uh, detail checks, uh, whether the database is available, hosting infrastructure, delivery groups are healthy, as well as published applications, right? So this is really, uh, it has all to do with the infrastructure monitoring. Now, let's switch to the end user monitoring. Now, end user monitoring begins really when end users start to interact with the Citrix environment. Uh, we separate end user monitoring cap capabilities in kind of three groups. Uh, Logon process monitoring, session monitoring, and machine monitoring. Logon process monitoring uh, enables us to capture end users experience in the very early stages of user interaction with Citrix when they are about to be connected to their requested resource. Many things can happen at that stage and visibility into total duration of the logon process as well as its individual stages such as brokering time or authentication, GPO load time are all essential in order to keep end users happy. So couple that with some effective reporting that we've built into the product and you get a very effective, robust and proactive platform. Now once end users are connected, session and machine monitoring uh, will kick in. A number of performance metrics are captured around resource use and responsiveness of both end users and machines that host these sessions. In that way, the management pack uh, reports can then correlate and user information, session information, and deliver reports for many use cases, from troubleshooting to regular health, uh, health checks, as well as planning uh, use cases. So let's see a few demos around end user monitoring. Now the first demo is going to be uh, about management pack detecting an issue with an end user's desktop that is consuming lots of CPU. Now, of course, uh, we begin with management pack triggering an alert. Now, bear in mind that you can also configure SCOM that you receive an alert uh, as text message or email. So basically, you launch a console and go and check the alert. In this case, we see that there's indeed uh, an issue with the uh, end user's desktop. The CPU utilization seems to be quite high, 82%. And there are, of course, some further details about this end user that is having an issue. So what we will do as the next step, actually, we will just grab this end user's name and very conveniently we have a, a positioned a report that will help you troubleshoot, analyze this end user's activity. So you just paste in the end user's name, then you select the time span uh, that you would like to analyze. For example, let's take a look at the last couple of days of information and you run this report. Now this report goes into the SCOM data warehouse and captures, grabs all the data about the end user session uh, that this user has been using and this is uh, really contains a lot of information such as IP address, Netscale address or a storefront address from where this user got connected to a client version and so on. So let us open up this last session, desktop session that apparently uh, you know, is the one that is problematic as it is running right at the point of the uh, issue was detected. So we can see that indeed this report shows that this desktop is having some um, CPU utilization issue. CPU is quite high, high 80s, but the rest of the session performance parameters are pretty flat, right? So there appears to be some CPU related issue there, but nothing in that area is affected. The same is with memory, right? It is pretty stable, flat, so nothing specially is going on in terms of memory consumption on that machine. So we can go further. We can go into the view the disk performance. And again, disk performance, read, write, traffic, IOPS is pretty you know, stable, so it doesn't appear to be affecting this desktop really much. What about the network? The same here, right? So we have pretty flat network performance and uh, it appears there are no apparent issues there as well as the latency that we capture. So the latency is pretty good between 30 and 40 milliseconds, which is great. So it doesn't appear to be really um, anything else except CPU is problematic, right? So what helps at this stage now is uh, it is best to kind of connect to the end user session and really see in real time what is going on there. 
And what best tool to use than Citrix Director, which we have, uh, you already have as part of your deployment, and we can connect, uh, simply connect to it um, directly from the alert that has been triggered. Like in this case, we've launched logged in, and we are directly at the end user session that was problematic. And there you are. In a couple of clicks, you just switch to the processes, and you're actually able to see that there is really indeed a process uh, called an antivirus in this case that is causing this end user high CPU issue, right? So really the uh, the product, the way it's structured is really tries to help you uh, and lead you through the troubleshooting session once the, uh, the issue has been detecting and making the information that you will most likely need in the next step just a click away, right? So a report was available directly from the alert. So was available launching of the Citrix director and it already the director was pre-configured with the information of the end user. So you just log in and bam, you see that end user session immediately. So that's, you know, making really things much more effective, speeding up your assessment. Now we've got the second demo ready for you, and this one is going to be slightly different, right? So in this case, what we will have is an end user calling help desk and reporting an issue with responsiveness. So let's see how that goes. So, in this case, the, the best thing to do if you have an end user complaining is simply launch directly this uh, desktop application usage by user report, find in the user, right, because uh, the user told you his username, and simply select the time span you want to analyze, like in this case. So, with what we are doing here is launching this report, checking what this end user has been doing in the last couple of days, right? So, we see this is obviously a hosting application user using two apps, Microsoft Word and Dynamics. And again, a lot of inf contextual information is available here from which IP he's connecting, connecting via which Netscaler. Uh, you know, which storefront actually launched this session. And if we go and focus just on the last application session this user has been accessing, uh, we can again drill down into the details, uh, same as before, right? So what we are able to see is uh, the end user complaining about uh, kind of responsiveness. So let's see, you know, if there are some really indications in the metrics about this issue. So first we look at the session metrics. Uh, and uh, CPU, memory, all appear to be pretty healthy. Now opening up the memory consumption also shows kind of a stable pattern, right? So nothing really to be worried about. Uh, now what about the disk performance? It all also seems to be pretty flat, right? So it doesn't seem to be really, you know, uh, the root cause for this performance issue does not appear to be coming from the end user session where the user is running the application. Same is with network. No issues there. Uh, but when we open the last one, which is about the Citrix latency, indeed we are able to see that perhaps for the last hour this user's latency has dramatically, uh, you know, worsened. Now what the report, this report allows you to do is actually jump directly to the hosting server to check, well, was it the server that was uh, uh, actually having performance issue? And just by the single click, you are here again on this server report looking at the hosting server's performance. You're able to see 10 users are being connected to this session. And uh, you are able to see some performance parameters such as CPU and memory on the graph above. And then the memory consumption seems pretty flat. Now what about the disk performance? Now all of a sudden, we're able to see that it kind of there has been increase in disk activity on this machine, right? So obviously the underlying server started to really consume a lot of, um, cause a lot of disk activity. So that could be it, right? Network performance is also pretty flat, nothing specific going on there, as well as the latency. Now, when we look at the latency from the server's perspective, we actually see average latency of all connected users. This means that all users were actually impacted by these performance problems. All 10 users that use apps on this server all of a sudden got bad responsiveness, right? And actually, you're able to see the root cause here, which is the disk activity. Now, of course, the next thing, uh, because it appears this, it is not session related, right? The next thing would be really to connect to the server and see what is causing this high disk activity that 
as a result appears to be uh, impacting the uh, latency of the end users, all 10 end users running on this uh, session. Okay, so this was the second demo and uh, there is one more demo related to user experience here uh, and this is about um, kind of keeping your environment healthy uh, uh, and it is going to demonstrate how you can use some reports to see, uh, you know, do weekly health checks for example. Like in this case, what I want to perform is on my uh, site Boston, I want to really see how is the uh, uh, logon durée performance right in this uh, environment? So I'm simply going to analyze the last month of the information and I want to see whether there are any strange patterns in the duration of the logon process to, uh, to all delivery groups that belong to the Boston uh, site. Right? Again running a report gives me the necessary information, really nicely summarized weekly average logon times and number of connected users. But in this second executive group, I actually see an increase in average user logon duration, right? Last week seems to be really much higher than all the others. And actually, I can just click on this uh, graph, which jumps directly to the detailed logon performance view, which kind of confirms there is indeed an issue with the average logon times um, as part of this user group. Uh, but the interesting part is, of course, uh, this drill down at the bottom, which shows the logon phase details. Uh, here we can see all the phases of the logon process that management pack captures from brokering time down to uh, logon interactive session time, which is the last phase. And by simply looking at this graph, you are able to see that, obviously, uh, there's an issue with the average log on uh, GPO's time where uh, loading of uh, group policy objects has dramatically increased right from last week. So from average seven, eight seconds, it jumped to 25 plus, right? So obviously there might be an issue there and it's worth inspecting. So again, product is helping you um, identify kind of uh, potentially um, situations that if they deteriorate further would probably result in users being very unhappy. Okay, now the, really the last part and a quick demo about the uh, Zen Desktop and Zen App dashboards. So we've also built a couple of dashboards into the product, most notably site SLA and uh, delivery group SLA reports. And those really focus on uh, showing you the service level on the site, such as uh, whether uh, metrics that are measured are uh, about availability, number of active users, utilization, things like that, right? So let's again switch to a demo and see uh, how you can actually view that information uh, live. Now to access dashboards, you would go again in the Zen App and Zen Desktop Management Pack under Dashboards and you would click on Site SLA Dashboard uh, View. Uh, this one is going to show uh, the, all your Zen Desktop Zen App sites uh, and uh, show some key metrics uh, and uh, kind of uh, as service level objectives for those metrics and of course marks those that, those that are out of the um, uh, wanted um, kind of uh, proportions, it will kind of mark them as red. Like you see, number of concurrent users or average logon duration on Boston site are beyond my thresholds that I have defined. So logon times are longer than 30 seconds, I don't need that and so on. A very similar dashboard is about delivery group SLAs, right? So here you're able to see uh, delivery group SLAs, for example, for executive group. What is the average logon time in this group? You see that the target time is 50 seconds, but you know the, the worst we've had is really 30, so we are well within defined limits and this service level objective is met, right? On the other side, if we look at the delivery group, uh, which is a server OS delivery group, if you look at the available load, which is the amount of a kind of uh, server power available for this group, should never be below 10%, right? And we are, as you are able to see, uh, the worst we've been at was 15%. So again, we are well within the SLA limits and you know, this, of course, helps us keep service levels high. Now really to conclude, uh, a few closing words on operations manager side. Uh, we've started 
some 30 minutes ago with a slide that was showing how Citrix and Operations Manager admins can work together when it comes to Citrix, right, using Ops Manager, our management pack, and so on. But why really stop here? Citrix experts very often also need to work with Active Directory guys or database guys and others, right? So actually Operations Manager is this general purpose monitoring platform that has capabilities uh, across all these technologies and more and you can actually use it as the operations bridge for all your subject matter experts in your organization, right? This single pane of glass approach uh, to monitor has uh, really uh, a number of benefits uh, such as reduction of downtime incidents, increased availability, faster resolution of problems and so on, right? So it's really um, helping you deliver higher quality of IT operations and you can optimize use of your IT resources. Now with that, I'm really concluding this presentation. I've, uh, I'm finishing with a couple of links that you can follow after this presentation. You can go to our uh, YouTube videos and demos. Uh, some latest solution and partner information is available on Citrix, uh, part of Citrix Ready website. Uh, you can follow us on Twitter uh, at management underscore products. Uh, then you can, of course, also evaluate. We'd be happy to support you with that. 60-day evaluation request is available, of course, uh, for our attendees of this webinar. And um, please do contact us. I've provided two uh, contact informations for EMEA Asia PAC customers as well as America. So my name is Bogdan, as was said, and my colleague John Lee is also available to help you in the Americas region. So please do reach out to us and with that I will be concluding this presentation and I think we can uh, go to questions. So I'm going to um, look at some of the questions uh, that you have posted to the question window. And the, one of the first one was uh, that I see my colleague has already been answered, uh, answering John Lee. He's been answering your questions while you, uh, the webinar was going on. So I uh, will we'll jump to the ones that actually have not been answered yet. Uh, right. So there was one question. Uh, there was a question about a load balancer. Balancing the XML traffic to the XML broker uh, is not recommended. Uh, no, I wouldn't say so. Uh, the load balancing is definitely recommended to the XML brokers, right? So actually, you know, and that um, is also going to be right monitored. So the, the actually the storefront monitoring is working on the storefront service locally, right? And load balancer is typically in front of that. So keep using load balancers. Of course, that's, that's of course, uh, also uh, useful. So there was another question. How much performance of the farm server is lost by, okay, so basically the uh, impact, the performance impact of the monitoring product. So uh, the impact of the monitoring product is uh, typically within a few percent when it goes to CPU uh, and memory wise it would be, um, you know, a couple of, um, I think it's within 100 to 100 max, so nothing, you know, in these days it's of course uh, minimal. And network traffic as well as uh, disk load is really minimal, so uh, I would say, uh, you know, many of our customers are using it uh, and uh, it's been, you know, working well across, across those environments. Thank you, Bogdan. Uh, okay. That was a wonderful presentation. Uh, we have a few more questions uh, that are asked by the attendees here. Uh, the first one is, uh, how is this product licensed? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, that's a, that's a good one. We get this one a lot. Um, so basically, the product is licensed on uh, uh, the same way as Citrix product is, right? This means um, if you know, I like to say, if you know a Citrix licensing model, you know ours too. Uh, which is, uh, if you are, if you own, for example, Zen desktop licenses, which you know can be named or concurrent, our product is licensed the same way, right? Per named or per concurrent user basis. Uh, 
Uh, on the other side, if you own Zen App licenses, those are available only on the per concurrent uh, basis model. And then we also have uh, Zen Management Pack licenses that match that, right? So basically, really, uh, one question is um, mostly enough for us to determine which licenses are needed, which is, you know, uh, which Citrix licenses you own and how many do you own? Well, these were two questions. So it's really, it's really that simple and straightforward. Great. Thank you. Uh, now moving to the second question. Uh, is the management pack already available now? Yeah, okay, great question. So this management pack is in final stages of, uh, you know, before being released. Uh, what we wanted to do is, of course, uh, get our hands on the official release of 7.6, which we know has been released today. So we have already installed it and are heavily testing it. So it, we plan to release the product uh, in the kind of mid-second half of uh, this month, uh, well, October, next month uh, still. So that's, that's availability. Right. Right. Now moving to the next question. Uh, can I manage my Zenapp 6, 6.5, Zen Desktop 5, Zen Desktop 5.5 as I transition my environment over to Zen Desktop 7? Or do I need a separate SCOM management server? Mm, okay, yeah. This is a very common scenario, right? While people uh, still use their existing Zen apps and desktop deployment, they are migrating slowly uh, to the, the latest and greatest from Citrix. And uh, yes, the way our products have, are designed is they actually coexist on the same SCOM server, right? So all you need is really your existing SCOM environment. You can deploy Zen app management pack that we have that will monitor your 6.5 environment. Uh, then we have Zen Desktop 5 management pack to, to still monitor your 5.x environment. And then you can deploy the one that we are just about to release, the Zen Desktop 7, right, uh, management pack, that is going to run in parallel with the previous two management packs and uh, enable you to uh, monitor Zen Desktop 7, right? So coexistence is, uh, is there on a single SCOM server. Okay, all right. Uh, moving to the next question. Uh, how much performance of the form server is lost by SCOM or COM trade monitoring? Okay, so we've already uh, uh, kind of answered this. Uh, it's a few within a few percent CPU-wise, memory-wise, a couple of hundred megs. Nowadays, that's not really significant. Disk and network is minimal, so neglectable, I would say. Great. Okay. I'm on to the next question. Uh, is logon process monitoring working with Flex or App V? Mm, okay, that's a good question. So basically, the logon process monitoring uh, is actually instrumentation that we are using uh, from within Citrix, right? So we are capturing actually the metrics as delivered by the Citrix uh, uh, this uh, agent. Uh, running on the server OS desktop OS machines and uh, as such I believe those you know phases are probably part of uh, uh, you know a certain phase I wouldn't know from the top of my head exactly uh, how that impacts the logon phases but if they actually are part of the logon process that those would probably be captured in some way or form okay thank you I'm going to the next question is NetScaler required to get the full details of the environment? If so, what features will be missing without it? Okay, uh, so the NetScaler management pack uh, is not required, uh, is, of course. So what NetScaler management pack will give you, uh, if you add it to the mix, is of course a more complete end-to-end -end view of your environment. So you are going to be able to also monitor this uh, you know, very first entry point, typically, that end user touches if they, for example, come from, from the Internet. Um, so you are going to see uh, uh, the health of these boxes there, right? So the hardware level monitoring is available, OS level as well as uh, capa NetScaler capabilities are being monitored by the NetScaler management pack. Um, but if you are not monitoring NetScaler, um, you know, the rest of the, uh, what you've seen here, everything will still be monitored on storefront level and on Zen Desktop, Zen App level. 
And in particular, uh, you've seen in one of the reports, uh, what we do, we also capture actually uh, a property uh, that we call connected via IP address. And this property actually tells you which Netscale a user has connected from. Right? So it's very useful if you want to troubleshoot, for example, end users. Um, and uh, I've just, you know, had a customer ask me the other day, how would I want to see all end user sessions that come from this particular Netscale IP address? Actually, you can do that now, right, by filtering on this IP address. Okay, next question. Can the process monitoring also be within SCORM without using the director? Ah, okay. Yeah, that's, that's a good one. It uh, potentially could be, right? Um, so uh, that is probably something we might consider in one of the next releases. But really, um, what we are getting with, you know, con connecting with director is, first off, uh, a tool that a Citrix administrator is familiar with, right? So sometimes a Citrix person will be uh, responsible for handling these types of alerts, and it's very easy for us to just provide this additional link, right? And, and what uh, director also gives you is, of course, real-time information about end-user sessions. So if user is connected to the box, with director you can actually uh, directly see his session, right? And SCOM was never really designed to do that, so from that perspective, director is also a very good match, right? So we like to say that these tools are really complement to each other, director helping you really drill down into bare-bone details and see the, um, you know, uh, session in real time, while, you know, management pack really uh, is there to sit and w watch the complete environment from end to end, not just end users, but also the infrastructure, right, and telling you if there's an issue somewhere with some connectivity or end user logon. And then, once you receive an alert, there's a problem, you would then jump and investigate, right? So it's really um, designed, uh, these two products are designed to work very nicely together. Okay, probably the next one is the easiest one. Uh, what is the minimum version of SCOM required for the management pack? Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, so uh, this, uh, our, most of our, man or all of our management packs supports still SCOM 2007 R2 and 2012 and 2012 R2, right? But some of the capabilities we're adding lately are, uh, of course, going to um, limit the latest management packs to SCOM 2012 only. Uh, such as dashboards and things like that. So it is, you know, really moving towards the the latest versions more and more. Okay. Right, moving to the next question. Are there any issues if my worker servers are provisioned using Citrix PVS? Mm -hmm. uh, no, no, n really no issue. So uh, as you may have seen, uh, one of the slides uh, was showing our complete management back family. Uh, and we also support, of course, monitoring of provisioning server. It was just not emphasized today as we wanted to really show you Zen Desktop 7.x new features, right, uh, related to user infrastructure monitoring. But if even if a worker server is provisioned, uh, then uh, we are still able to monitor it, right? So uh, the same way, actually, as we would any other uh, worker server. Right, all right. Moving to the second last question. Is the Netscaler MP dependent on Netscaler HDX Insight? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, no, uh, not yet at this point. So, uh, but we are uh, looking to add capabilities uh, to Netscaler management pack, but still we are not going to make it dependent on that, right? So it will be rather uh, that if you have HDX Insight enabled, you will get additional capabilities, right? But if you don't have this um, uh, feature activated, you will still be able to monitor your Netscalers, right? So hardware is there always. If you have hard uh, physical appliance, then internal monitoring of functions and uh, you know, uh, resources is uh, always uh, there and needs to be working. Okay. So we have one last question. Uh, the question is, are the site SLA dashboard part of new version? Yes, 
that is correct. So this site SLA and uh, delivery group SLAs uh, are going to be just part of this latest version. Yeah. But all our existing customers, for example, uh, that are on active support can easily just upgrade. Uh, all new versions are free of charge to them, so that should be an easy transition, I would imagine. Okay, perfect. Right, we don't have any more questions. Yeah, let me cross check if you have any questions now. Good, I, I believe we don't have any more questions for you. Okay, thank you. Great. So that was a wonderful presentation, uh, Bogdan. Thank you very much for that. And thank you all for attending today's webinar in the Citrix Ready Technical Webinar Series. Uh, this concludes our broadcast.